Carlos, welcome to Think Builder. Now today I'm going to be doing my second attempt on doing a CYK print. So if you're interested in how this goes for me, as well, if you want to learn yourself, don't go anywhere. Alright, you know, so I got done doing my test prints with the CYK and the results weren't as I expected. So anybody who's been doing CYK for a while, please watch everything and let me know what to make different next time it's gonna help me out a lot but anyways let's go with the video all right so before we get started first thing is we gotta do the separations in photoshop now this time i'm gonna go more into detail on how to do it so right now i'm gonna go to the day where i where i actually separate my the image make my adjustments and print the film as well as exposing it then we'll go back to today when I'm actually printing it. Alright amigos, so now let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the image that I downloaded. And I will leave the link to this image in case you want to follow this and try it yourself. It's royalty free, so no worries there. Okay, so this is the original image. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document, 11 by 17 because that is my film size. Just copy, duplicate the layer of me. Okay, here. And right now, I don't like this to be like on the very edge of the film. So I'm not gonna crop this image. And it took me a while to figure it out, but if I literally go to crop and end up cropping it, and ends up cropping the entire. Uh, how you say canvas and I don't want that so I figure a way just make it to uh, how do you say convert to smart object go and then I can crop it with no problem and since my width is 11 inches I'm gonna make this ten and a half. No, I'll make it ten and a quarter, about ten and a quarter. Let's say yes. And there. So this is where we're gonna do things different from last time. This time I'm gonna adjust the image, the brightness and the contrast. And again, I'm not a total Photoshop expert. That's just me testing out those dragging those, how do you say, those adjustments. Some probably knows a lot more Photoshop might do a better job because it's kind of, I want to fix it more, but I don't really, I don't really know exactly how because I don't have the skills yet. But anyways, I think that would be, I think that would do good. Like for example, I wish I could fix this in the background, this. Maybe I could. Let me see if I could figure it out. Position. Now I could change just the background and avoid. I'm going to separate this real quick. I got to find my image first. And from last time, I have these actions here where basically it's, it separates for me because right now this isn't seeing what came out. If it's not, you always got to make sure it's seeing what came first. And if you start out with RGP, RGP, and start messing around with the levels, and then you switch it to CYK, it's gonna <laughs> affect it. So, I forgot to mention in the beginning. Make sure it's always CYK first. And here in the channels, 
And normally I use these actions again. I just choose the outcut I want. And it does it automatically for me. And also I ask the restriction marks. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to show you guys do it manually. So let's start with Cyan. So you just click on Cyan. Do the key channel. New document. I'm going to name it Cyan, obviously. Cyan clocks. I want to be confused. Okay. Okay, so here's the Cyan. And before we actually convert to a bitmap, I'm going to add the registration marks. And for me, the best way to do it is I just create a new document. Because again, I don't want to mess with the original one. Okay. A lot easier way to do it is to just download some. Registration marks where you guys can just copy and paste. But uh, I'll show you guys how to do it. I figured this out. I forgot where we're from. Plus. And click on restaurant type. So once then, once you restorize the little plus sign, so the entire canvas, make sure you have the layer click with that little plus thing, click on this move button, align it to the middle, or there. I'm going to erase this up more. Oops. This one. Now let's do this again. Select all. Middle. Deselect. And this is going to make copy. Hold alt. Make sure. There we go. You might even move this up a little bit. Okay, so you have your registration marks. And some people could do with this, just the middle ones, but you want to add extra ones. Again, you always do this copy or just click on Alt, hold Alt and drag it. Click one here. Then add another one over here. Oops, that went out too far. But yeah, you can do that. Hide, this, hide the background, you could merge these ones together. Let's click on. Uh, but when you do that, you gotta be careful. You, you gotta make sure that these ones are the exact same distance from the middle because right now if I, right now if I, uh, how do you say, if I align it to the middle, it might move more that way, so you gotta make sure it's the right distance. But anyways, again, so click off. Okay, Migos, interrupting here. Before you copy the registration marks to the file here, there's something uh, you need to do before that. Something I realized after I printed the films, because when I printed the films, I realized that on the registration marks, they had like half tones on there. And at first I was confused. But after checking the file, I realized that the registration marks, these ones right here, they weren't 100% black, which caused half tones. And right now, that wouldn't be a, such a problem because there are just registration marks. But in case, for example, if you want to copy some certain text, I'll just see, like, I'll let you guys know this just to avoid that in the future in case it does happen. So what I'm going to do right now is I just click on the one of the registration marks. Click on select and similar, that will select all of them. Then on this, I forgot, what, I don't remember what it's called. Make sure that's 100% black because earlier it was on 60% cyan and 100% black as well. So make sure it's 100% black and 0% the rest of them. Click OK, then click on your brush and just click on every single registration mark. 
Control D to deselect everything. But anyways, I guess I click on file, copy, merge. Where is it? Then? Click on design, paste, top, combo, and you can click on grayscale right now. I don't, I'm not really exactly sure, but since it's already available in Bitman, I'm just going to keep it to Bitman. Uh, for the input output, I just heard that it has to be the same, the input and output, exactly, so it's 300 input, it's going to be 300 output. You just have some screen, click OK, and the LPI, usually I do 45, but since I did end up getting my new printer, I'm going to raise it up to 50, see how it comes out. The angle, I'm not an expert there, I can't really tell you what angle to use, I just keep it the way it is on my computer, same to the shape. Some people say to use round, some people say to use ellipse. I just stick to ellipse. I guess you gotta do a lot of tests to figure that out later on. But right now, just keep that the same. Click OK. And there. So right now, I have my cyan. Let me zoom in. And now it's time to do. Where is it at? Time to do magenta. So again, right click. Click channel, new document, click on what is it? Magenta, magenta clock. Okay. And again, I'm gonna paste the my registration marks. Cyan, that's gonna be a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna start printing this on my new Canon. Thank you again for my people who helped me out get this printer. All right, buy a print. Print it. I'm still trying to figure out the best, the best way to print this. Photo papers. I can't match. I'm just using that because I saw that on Star Screen Printing, that, that video. But yeah. Again, I need to take, I need to mess around with this to figure out the best one for me. Size, there by 17. Okay. And let's print. I don't know why it does that only on Photoshop on Illustrator doesn't do that. So another thing I forgot to mention during the original recording is in case you don't have a printer, one way to do it is you can save it to a PDF file and you could go to your local Office Depot or any one of those places where you can have files printed and just have them printed for you. And the way I used to do it is I'll just go to file, save as and click on Photoshop PDF. And for example, this is Cyan, I'll just name it as Cyan. And click Save. And I click OK. And this, honestly, I don't really know what this means. So if you guys know, please let me know. I just leave it on there and I just click Save PDF. And just click Yes. And there you go. So it keeps the half tones. And all you gotta do is go to Office Depot or anywhere you go and just print it out. So here, the films. Again, I forgot to label them, which is cyan, which is magenta. So I had to do with the pen right here. Forgot about that again. And unlike the maestro, he could tell which one's which, but not me. But anyways, so here's the cyan. The one I just printed with my new adjustments and with the Canon. And here's the cyan that I printed for the first time. My first attempt at doing CYK. And ignore that stain, that's the motion right there. 
But anyways, and this was also printed at Office Depot. So, yeah, big difference, man. Adjusting the image helped out a lot. So hopefully I'll get a more detailed photo picture printed. And right now, I am going to burn these screens. But I'm not sure where I'm going to print them because, one, I don't have the ink. I don't have CYK ink. Nor the squeegees for they are all this size. So what I'm thinking of doing is to tell him if he could let me borrow his ink and his squeegees. That I could print him here, calm and no rush, and just return the next day. So yeah, so most likely I'll do that one, but I don't know when. So we'll see. So I just got finished exposing my screens and I'm really happy with the results man. These came out way better than last time. For example, I'm not really sure what color this is, but I'll look at it in the film. Luckily in the film I actually wrote it. This one, this one's the black like guitar already. And here's the other one, I, I'm not really sure, I think this is yellow. I had the one issue right here, you can tell. Or emotion. I don't know how the emotion didn't wash off, but yeah. But that's no problem. Here's the next color. Yeah. Today, I was finally able to get the squeegees and the inks, the CMYK inks from the Maestro because I don't have these inks and I don't have enough. I don't have enough squeegees. I only have one long one. That like, took a long time for me to actually get this print ready because I had to go with the maestro I asked him for if he could let me borrow it during a time where he wasn't going to use it and then since probably this week was the whole day of the dead here in Mexico so that also got kind of in the way but finally got my ink got my squeegees and I'm ready to print here are the films and the films I mean here are the screens and right now, I don't know which one this is, because again, even though I did label it here on the film, I do have small screens, and it doesn't fit. And like, right here for example, I got the top registration marks from the bottom, I didn't even really get it. So, basically what this means is I got to register each screen just by eyeballing it. A little bit more difficult, but it should be it was done. I mean, I did it on last time, it wasn't that bad. This is why I try to invest in larger screens, 20 by 24, so I want to deal with this issue. But yeah, so let's get started registering the screens, eyeballing it. No registration marks and no micro, so. Okay, so this is the magenta. First, this is cyan. I thought it was magenta because I used the film for magenta, so that kind of 
threw me off. But yeah, so this is cyan. And now we're gonna do magenta. Okay, so we're, look, we're looking good, but the final print will tell. So let me load up the inks and set up the squeegees. I'm gonna load the screen the ink. And again, in order to use, to do CNYK print, you do need a certain ink. And I don't know how to say it in English, but in Spanish, this is called Polychromia. And this is for cyan. Because I guess the the CYK inks are kind of like transparent, that way the colors can actually like blend and mix together. So you can't just use a regular blue or regular yellow and a regular type of like magenta color. It has to be specific for CYK prints. And I don't have that, but hopefully the maestro does. All right, so I have all the ink, all the screens set up, and now I'm gonna do my first test print to see how the registration is. Hopefully it's good, cause the last thing I wanna do is register all over again. But yeah, so wish me luck, man. All right, so I'm gonna use this poly shirt just to see how it goes. Start with cyan. Okay, right now it looks like crap. I'll just flip this around. Okay, it looks really, really, how do you say? I don't know, I say it looks too dark. I think on my next test try, I'm gonna do with yellow. Cyan, yellow, magenta, then black. Okay, not that bad. Flash this. Hopefully I don't burn this because this is a, uh, how do you say, 100% polyester shirt. <sighs> Let's get a closer look at this. As you can tell, um, it still looks kind of like 
hurry say right off you can tell that I'm off uh, with the yellow but compared to the first CYK print I did it looks a lot better you can actually see in the entire image but right now I'm gonna make some adjustments I'm gonna do the yellow first to see how that comes out okay next shirt now this is cotton so we'll try with the yellow first see how that comes out It looks more smudge. Oh, my bad. Okay, so this is my second test print. On this one, I did the yellow first. And honestly, looking at it now, it looks brighter. Here's the, when I start with cyan first, and this one when I started with the yellow first. So we're not gonna do another test print. I can with the starting with the cyan first. And the print quality also depends on the ink. Now the ink that I got right now, it is from the maestro, and I realized that he has his ink more like creamy, like very, it kind of looks like almost like water based. I'm gonna do wet on wet right now. Everything wet on wet. And it looks not that bad. Okay, so this is test print number three. This was all wet and wet, no flash between any color. And it looks a little bit better, but to me it still looks real like muddy right here. I think that's most likely from the from my film. Probably I need to work more on my actual image when adjusting the 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 actual photo on Photoshop. Okay, look at that. I mean, there's no details on that, man. Okay, so I'm gonna do another test print where I'm actually gonna have flashing between the colors. And I'm gonna try to find if I can find a, a regular shirt because these are polo shirts. And. For those who know polos, they're kind of more, the way the fabric is, they have wire holes. So I'll do one more, and I'll try to throw a regular shirt. Okay, this one looks a little bit more clear, but... Okay. So this is test print. What? Number four? It looks a little bit better. It doesn't look, compared to this one, way better. This one looks with like way too much green on here. This one, a lot better, man. Four. This one looks horrible. 
as well as this one. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. You see? And this is because I did, I did cyan, magenta, yellow, and then I hit it again with magenta, which made the red actually pop out. So, let's continue doing these prints. Okay, I found a dirty shirt, but we're gonna search them. It will do. I feel like there's too much when too much cyan. Hit it again with the magenta. Okay, so this is test print number five on our winter t-shirt. Right here, this is right here that's bothering me. Right here, and this, but all this right here. Probably might be I'm putting too much pressure and probably too much cyan. So I'm gonna do another print. Or I'm gonna use less pressure. Okay, so this is test print number one, two, four, five, six. So right now I'm gonna use less pressure and. Only one stroke of the cyan. So here's test number six. This is where I use less pressure, but it still looks very, it doesn't look bright, man. Let's do another test print, man. This time I'm gonna to try to re-register everything. And then I might have to deal with it as well. Well, it's starting to look better, but... <sighs> okay. So I'm kind of getting there, but... Even though you can't really tell from the video, but here in person... It looks smudge, man. Okay, test print number 8, I believe so. This is an Apollo shirt. Oh, where did I get this? Oh, I did too right here. So, this is test print number, I have no idea, I already lost count, man. And there's no room. So this is actually test print number two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Test print number nine, I lost count. Okay, this one came out a lot better, man. All right, so this is test print number nine, if I remember correctly. 
and by far is the best one out of all of them it looks a lot better unfortunately it kind of did move here because when I did the yellow I lifted up the screen and the shirt lifted up so that kind of caused an issue when I did the black but other than that this one looks out of all of them the best one so here's this one all right another test print test print number 10 on our regular t-shirt let's see how it goes i couldn't i'm gonna do it the same way i did on my last one One more print because my phone's about to die. I'm gonna do it real quick, wet on wet everything. Now, yesterday I did my test and I totally forgot, I lost count of how many I did. And today I'm gonna to show you guys just a closer look. And again, this was not, this did not come out the way I expected. Almost better than last time, my first attempt. But there are some more places to improve. Still need to learn a lot. And right now, this was, my, this was the first, very first test print. Obviously you can't see nothing. And this was the second, the second one I did. And this one, the brightness, is what exactly I was looking for. But it still kind of came out kind of smudge. It's the amount of brightness I was looking for. But right here, the background, there's no detail here. This looks kind of like it got smudge. For the dress, the cloth looks bright. And when I went to my other test, this one, which I believe was like, I forgot what test this was. Actually, the background, I was getting what I was looking for. But here, again, not that good, got smudge. Maybe I should have cleaned my screen before I did the next test print because there was <laughs> ink on the bottom of the screen. There is ink on the bottom of the screen, so probably that had to do something with this going around here. Then I start printing on a regular shirt. And again, I forgot which thing came out first. <laughs> this one, horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And this one, I was getting closer to getting the result I was looking for. Because see, I was getting the background. The color was getting brighter. But just here, man. Okay. Now, seeing all these tests, different tests I did, the one I liked the most was actually the second test print I did, which is this one right here. Because it got basically the, the brightness of the color, but except right here, it kind of got like smudgy. And the rest were a lot more like smudge. I don't know how to exactly describe it, but here on the elbow, I lost a lot of detail. It looked kind of more like a brownish color. And probably it's because I didn't clean my screens again at the bottom, because they did have ink, as you saw, where I kind of changed the techniques of what color to print first and I did that without seeing the bottom of the screen before I went to the next one so I uh, kind of had some ink build up on the screen so most likely they had to do something with it but again it could be also 
the way I separate the, not the way I separate, but the way I just did the image on Photoshop to as well. But it all could also be most likely the image, because I remember I did make some adjustments in Photoshop with the whole brightness and contrast and like even with printing a regular like a paper where you send a printer where when you send the screen might not be exactly as you print it and so it will be the same case as printing on a shirt so it might look nice on the computer screen but here probably not that good but again anyone who's watching if you have any clue of where I made a mistake or where I should make things different please let me know in the comments or send me a message because it will help me a lot to improve this technique because I am trying to learn this man because CYK it's incredible how much what you can do with it man the reason I wanted to learn CYK print was because there are some times where you have some designs where it's a lot of colors and I might not have that many colors or it might be too much work and it might be easier just to do a straight up CMYK print. Also, another thing I'm going to do is, in order to get like some better advice, I am going to take my shirts that I tested with the Maestro so you could have a look at them and tell me if what may cost that smudge. As well, I'm going to take my screens. I'm going to clean my first, I'm going to take my screens so that we can look at them. So let me know if it was probably, if the screens are good, then it's probably the way I printed them, the way I, I printed them, or as well, if maybe I did the separations wrong, I'm going to take the films as well so you can have a look at those, and I'm going to ask them if you could print a blank with these screens, just to see how his print comes out compared to mine, because if this print comes out incredible, then obviously it was because I didn't do a right technique. But if they come out the same way, then he'll give me better advice telling me that it's most likely just uh, my films. So I'm going to make sure to film with him. That way we can all get some ideas on how to do some white prints because it's better to have different opinions because, again, a lot of people, they might have a different technique. This technique might not work for this person, this person, this person's technique might not work for that person, but it's better to have a lot of opinions and suggestions just so one could get like try them out and see which one works best for them. And that's what we do. Because his CYK prints are incredible, man. So I guess we're kinda of done for this video. Thanks for watching my second attempt on trying to see why K print. Took a lot of work, man. Yeah. And again, I'm not surprised that it came out perfect. I mean, this is my second attempt trying and seeing what cake print is it's not something you're gonna master on your first two attempts. It is takes does take a long time for you to get the uh, experience and the techniques to do it correctly because it's not as simple as you know some regular you know prints like this where it's just solid colors because that one you, there's a lot of variables that could go into it. Again, the way you separate in Photoshop, as well as the LPI they use, as well as the angles and the dot when the if you use round or eclipse, that also affects the way it's gonna come out, as well as the, if you use the right mesh. Cause I use this is one twenty here in Mexico, which is I think three or five as well as what color you start with. Some people start with cyan, some people would start with a different color. And again, it probably all depends on the image as well. Because I have even asked the maestro, like, do you start with cyan? And he's like, it all depends on the actual image. Sometimes you might start with this color. Sometimes it even starts with black. So yes, it all depends on that. And obviously, I'm not gonna learn that in my first attempt. You know, it's gonna take a lot of practices and errors Finally, find the technique that's right for me. So I'm gonna keep doing this every time I have a chance to, you know, try to improve myself. And you guys are gonna follow me. And hopefully, one day comes where I finally master CNYK, and then we all can look back at these videos and we can see where I came from. 
But yeah, so that's all for today's video. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. As well, if you have any tips or suggestions to me or for anybody so they could read them, please leave them in the comments below because it will help out a lot. I am trying to get a lot of different um, tips, opinions from different kinds of people just to try them out and see which one works best for me. So again, if you have any good suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And for the rest of you guys, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And again, social media, follow me there. And if you guys want to get in contact with me, feel free. I don't mind answering any of your questions. And if I don't answer a comment, don't think I ignore it because sometimes I don't see them. Sometimes they end up in the spam. I mentioned this before, but I still kind of feel bad because sometimes I'd be looking through my comments and I'll find one that's like from months ago. And I'm like, oh crap, man, you know, this person probably ends up ignoring them, which I'm not. So again, if I don't reply to a message or a comment, don't hesitate to leave it again. It won't bother me, man. So feel free to contact with me with any information or comments. So in the meantime, amigos, I'll see you guys in the next video.